consider the cable-supported angled roof beam shown below. If the beam carries a vertical load of 12 kN per meter of its length, what is the tension in the cable AC? What are the reactions at A and B? Again, we'll establish our coordinate system and then start to break the system down. We should start by finding the reaction forces for all the supports. Point B is a pin support, which resists translation in the x and y direction. We also have the tension in the cable T, which acts along the angle of the cable. We should also turn that distributed load into a point load, which is the force applied 12 kN per meter times the length of the beam L. We can see that the length of the beam is unknown, so we'll have to solve for it using Pythagorean theorem. L equals the square root of 10 squared, which comes from 8 meters plus 2 meters, plus 5.5 squared, which comes from 4 meters plus 1.5 meters. This means that L equals 11.4 meters. We can finish solving for P. So P equals 12 kN per meter times 11.4 meters. This means that P equals 136.8 kN placed at the center of the horizontal distance, which is 5 meters. To help solve this problem, we can consider the tension in the cable as a vector. The equation shown below might look confusing, but I'll break it down. The T with the arrow on top means we're establishing the tension in the cable as a vector. We know the tension in the cable is headed from C to A because it makes sense that the cable is going downwards. We want the direction of the cable without the magnitude, so we would have to turn it into a unit vector. If you remember from high school, a unit vector has a length of 1, and the equation of a unit vector is equal to u, which represents a non-zero vector divided by the length of u. So starting from C to A, it travels 8 meters to the left and down 1 meter as 4 subtract 3 is 1 meter. So negative 8 and negative 1 represent the u in our equation, since they are the direction. We then divide each number by the length of u, which is the length of the cable. The length of the cable is equal to the square root of 8 squared plus 1 squared. We'll then get negative 0 0.99 in the x direction and negative 0 0.124 in the y direction. Remember that we have to multiply by t as we're solving for the tension in the cable. So overall, we end up with the directional component of the vector and wherever the tension in the cable is. To simplify this even further, we can treat Tx as negative 0.99t and Ty as negative 0.124t. Now we have to figure out the moment that the tension cable generates about point B. Remember, moment is equal to force times the perpendicular distance. The moment about B is equal to zero, which is equal to negative 136.8 kilonewtons times 5 meters plus negative Tx times 4 meters plus positive Ty times 8 meters. Remembering that Tx equals negative 0.99t and Ty equals negative 0.124t, Rearranging the equation, you'll get T equals 230.3 kilonewtons. Now we can use the remaining equilibrium equations to solve for Bx and By. The net force in the x direction equals 0, which equals Tx plus Bx. Remembering that Tx equals negative 0.99t, and t equals 230.3 kilonewtons, we get bx equals 228 kilonewtons. The net force in the y direction equals 0, which equals ty subtract 136.8 kilonewtons plus by. 
remembering that ty equals negative 0.124t and t equals 230.3 kilonewtons, you get by equals 165.4 kilonewtons. This is a summary slide to show all the reactions. As you know, we didn't solve for the reactions at A. That's because the reaction at A will be equal to the tension in cable T and act in the same direction as the tension vector. The only difference would be that it would be applied from the wall towards point C.